Hey, what's going on everybody? I decided to jump in real quick to explain this is a very longer type of video. It's a lot longer than what I normally do. And if you came to see the cemetery, I'll put the timestamp in somewhere right in there so you know where to go to just see that. But if not, sit back, enjoy the video. I answer some of the questions. If you have questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. So the next time I do this, I can answer those. So let's get into the video. Hey, what's going on everybody? I would like to say good morning. It's uh, 6.30 where I'm at. Uh, when you're watching this, it's probably gonna be in the afternoon, but right now it's 6.30 in the morning and that sun's really bright. I thought today, um, I was going to Atlanta, so I thought, hey, why I go over there? Why don't I just film a little bit on the way and we could find some more little roadside oddities while we're going to look at what we're looking at and maybe I can I, I had you guys I was going to do some you okay I know it's early you all right all right good all right so I know that um that just threw me off I hope you guys are okay hope you didn't bust your nose or nothing on the steering wheel anyway um yeah the the roadside oddities there's a couple that I'd like to go look at there is um, a few questions I had you guys submit. I was gonna go do them out on the golf course on the second channel. If you don't know, we have a, I have a second channel, me and Mark do, where we go play golf and answer questions and ask questions. And I was gonna do it there, but I was like, eh, I'll just answer them on the way this way. Cause it's like, I'm going this way and I'm gonna be just riding by myself for like four hours. So why not? I do gotta say one thing that now that gas is, you know, as high as it is, traffic has really thinned out a lot. It seems like, you can tell, not many people are just traveling to travel right now. Even though it is summer, and you would, you know, a lot of people have plans, it doesn't seem very busy on the roads here in Alabama. Anyway, I don't know what it's like in your part of the world, but um, yeah, it's not, too, it's not too busy. I mean, it's, you know, it should be rush hour right now, but it's not. Now that we're going through, you get to see the beautiful side of Birmingham that they don't show you, that the World Games aren't going to show you. This is, uh, I don't even remember the name, of Caraway Boulevard, yeah. So that is Old Caraway Hospital that you see. It probably has 500 homeless people living in it. All the windows have been busted out of it. It is a bad, bad place. You do not go there. Like, it's fenced in, fenced in but you, you don't go there. It's not, it's not good. Like I can tell you that. There's a couple of people that have went through it and this was years and years ago, right after it closed. And I couldn't imagine what it looks like now in there. But the one channel that comes off the top of my head is the proper people. They do good urban exploring. And uh, yeah, they went through there. That was years and years ago. And now you're coming up on the uh, Top Golf, which was the first thing that built out this way on this side of Birmingham. This, this used to be the underdeveloped, the, the bad side of town, if you will. Like the side of town that you didn't want to be out on. Like you didn't want to go on this side of town at dark, especially as a white guy, you didn't want to come over here because there was no reason to be over here late at night. All right, so we are just passing through Talladega we are headed ever so much more closer to Atlanta so I thought while we were going down the road I would answer some of the questions well I got two questions and going forward in the future um, just put some questions down in the comments now and then the next time I do this I'll just use those questions and we'll go from there so Robert M 1989 asked one place you would like to visit example Australia gosh man like let's see there's so many places like if I think like outside of the US like Australia would be really cool like some I would like to go visit because I'm like a big history kind of guy so to me it would be cool to go to places like Verdun and the Somme and like visit like I have this weird infatuation with World War One, like trenches and 
like all these places you can't like you know there's those in France like it's just no man's land still just because there's so much so many ordinances and all that stuff like to me that really fascinates me and uh, Australia would be cool just because it's Australia and like everything there seems really neat at least on the coastline you know um, I think like Ireland would be fun since I play golf it would be cool to go play at the old course in Scotland and do all that but yeah I think if I had like if somebody was like gun to the head you gotta pick a place I think I don't know like there's so many places like with inside the US like for you and I to go like I have we hadn't even made it into like Savannah yet or like any of these other you know southern like Florida like we haven't traveled to Florida together which we're going to some towards the end of the year I've got some plans for that but like we haven't made it to Savannah to go to uh, the, the historic cemetery there uh, Bonaventure I think is the Bona, Bona something right um, like out west up north northwest I would love to like the Pacific Northwest like for you and I to be able to go to like the redwoods and you know see how the giants trees and all that 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 would be really cool gosh there's so many places right like there's just a lot the earth is a really big place and it's like where we're at or where I'm at like we only just barely like scratch the surface of stuff because like we've been to Dallas once you know we go to Tennessee Georgia and Alabama Mississippi all the time doing stuff but as far as like just the US and then you got like South America it would be cool to go see like to to Peru or like Puma Punku and uh, that's why I always say it like that just because I'm a redneck um, you know like any of the like gosh like I don't know like there's so many places but I guess if it's like to do with golf, like if I could play anywhere, yeah, take me to the old course. I would play there, maybe Pebble Beach out in California. That would be fun just to say that I've played there. Um, but if it's like history, which like I would say Gettysburg, that's an easy, you know, I, that's a tangent. Like I can almost grab that, but any kind of like World War II, World War I type of location in Europe, or even in the Pacific, like there's some really, there's still some really cool things in the Pacific that haven't been destroyed. Like over time, they're starting to fall apart. But like by the time I may have the chance to go there, they're probably not going to be there anymore. But you know, that's one of those kind of things. And but just as pure travel, like it looks like it would be really neat, like during the winter months, to go to like Switzerland or something, or Norway, or any of those. Those, like somewhere in Europe like to me that just seems like a like the way people imagine America and like with their McDonald's fast food you know like, like McDonald's like the fast food type stuff like I imagine like when I think of Europe it's either like France type of Europe or it's like people skiing type of Europe and I don't know why that's I guess maybe from movies and stuff but yeah so a long story short if I could go anywhere, I think it just depends on the situation and maybe the time of my life, like the age. Like if you would have asked me when I was 21, I'd have been like, we're going to Vegas and we're doing all that, which we I have done. And it, But now that I'm older, it's like, well, yeah, whatever. Like, well, I would rather go do something historical or like now with the channel, it's like if there was something I could do, like you and I would go do it together now. So yeah, long story short, that's the answer of, I don't really know. I do know, but it's like, I don't have like a definite place. Like I would, there's so many places I'd love to go to that I don't really have like a top place. And I don't know, if, I guess just because there's so many different things. But if somebody was like, you gotta pick a thing, gun to the head, you gotta pick a place. Like, I would have to think about it. Like, if they gave me, like, they're like, you got three minutes. And if you don't say a place we're going to do it, then I guess it would have to either be a toss-up between, like, somewhere in the world. Like, I think it would be cool to go to, like, Fiji and go, like, snorkel. Or, like, go to London and do all that 
fish and chips crap, you know, or like I said, I think I would pick Norway. Like, let's do that. Like, all that Scandinavian stuff, like, you watch those, have you watched the, uh, the weather forecasts from those countries where they try to, where they pronounce the names that are, you know, like, as big as, like, it has, like, 50, look like, characters in it? Like, to me, that would be fun. Or, like, if, even in Alaska, right? Like, you go all the way to the top of Alaska, like, above the Arctic Circle. That would be kind of fun. That would be neat. I can see Russia from my house. There's that old, that old Sarah Palin bit, right? But, yeah. So that answers that question. Maybe. Kind of. In a, a very long, drawn-out way of answering it. So, yeah. Um, submit. You know, just throw questions out there. And as we travel, like as you and I travel together, we'll, I'll just answer some of these questions. Anything, right? I mean, don't get like, you know let's be adult here, but we don't have to be too adult. Like we can be somewhat funny and childish and stuff like that. It's okay. Like I don't have any issues with that. Some people are probably more square and they don't like, I don't know. They might not like answering very like, I don't know, silly questions, but I love silly. That's uh, that's just part of me. All right. So we're in, we are officially in Georgia. We just crossed over into uh, Douglas County, so we're getting close to Atlanta, I think, let me check, we are 32, we're about 45 minutes from where we're headed next, and so I thought, let's go ahead and get the last question, let's go ahead and do that before we get to the, our first, like, random thing that we're going to, and this is from Arlene, and she asked, how'd you come up with the name Backroads? Pretty good, straightforward question, right? Let me, let me fix you guys, there you go. Um, it started out as multiple different names. Like, I forget, I think one was called Side Quest and then Side Streets. And, like, it was all kinds of, like, the, like random names like that. Like, I think there was four or five different names that I went with. And I would change the channel name to that. And then so I would get on YouTube and start looking up stuff. Because I wanted something simple something that's easy to remember plus I wanted something that um, we could see like people also like free advertisement right like with the name back roads like when you watch all these other channels and you hear them say that we're going down the back roads like my thing is I want you ooh, ooh, po -po. hello mr. police it's the fine unit whatever that is so I wanted like free as advertisement out of that. I wanted um, to like all these, you know, that's why I think I went with back roads because most traveling vlog stuff, you know, any kind of people that do YouTube travel videos, they're going to at least mention back roads every so often. Like, oh, we're going to go down the back roads or we're going to travel the back roads or whatever. So I, that's, I think, the main reason I went with it, plus all the other, like, the other names that I had chose, they just didn't, I don't know, it just didn't feel right. And so I landed on Backroads and was like, yeah, like, that's kind of cool, because that's kind of what I wanted to do anyway, was travel the Backroads, like, go to the graves, we'll, you know, do history stuff, which we got to get back into. Like, I think since, like, uh, March, like, it's just been nothing but grave video after grave video, which is fine, it's fun. But it's like we got to change up because I don't want to get, I don't, it'll get monotonous to me, like doing the same thing over and over and over. And plus, I want to keep the channel fresh. I want to do some other things. So, yeah, the name of Backroads was in part due to me wanting to get a little free advertising. Because if you're watching another creator and you hear them say, hey, we're going down the Backroads, maybe you'll think of me too. And um, some of the other stuff, I just didn't like it. Like, I had side quest because, I don't know, it just seemed like something random. And, I don't know, I just didn't like them. Like, there was three or four others that I can't remember. Just didn't like them. It didn't work out. But I'm glad Backroads worked out. Like, I don't know of another channel called Backroads. You know, like, that's the good thing. I feel like I'm large enough now where if somebody wants to name their channel that, it's not going to work out in their favor. But it doesn't really matter. We're established. We're a cool community. We're like a, a little, a little small community on YouTube. 
it like to me it feels big but in the grand scheme of things we're we're a very small channel that's growing quickly and i can't thank you guys enough for that either so we are let's see 38 minutes away from our first like random little travel spot to get to today i'm excited that we're doing a little travel blog it's been you know we hadn't done one of these since dallas which was uh somewhere in april so it's been a couple of months since we got to do this so we're here in a windy hatfield georgia gonna make our stop before we go to our main thing that we're headed to today i wanted to come by and see this so it's a what they call the worry rock and this little town it's a railroad town if you can't you can see the tracks right there it's over here by the depot which has been turned into a museum in 1938 the town thought hey to try to increase you know like a uh, traffic through the town they decided to put a rock in and they called it the worry rock so everybody could come over here and explain their worries and everything to the rock so that's what we're doing we're going to walk over here to the rock and we're going to see what it looks like it's a cool little town it's the first time i've been to this part of georgia it's part of the historical society and it's a busy little intersection i know that much so here it is here's the worry rock so to increase you know tourism in the area they thought hey let's put this rock in here and people can come sit on it and share their worries with the rock how cool Let's walk over here. Let's see what this looks like. Nowadays, this town is passed by 85 and 75. So it's kind of one of those towns that died when the interstate came in. But yeah, how cool. Right, right there is where you used to get on and off the train and the town itself is really neat. So yeah, if you could, you know, put your worries on the worry rock, what would you say, right? Like this day and time, like I guess if I had to put my worries on the rock, it would be something like, I worry about the channel, I worry about the history of, you know, or the future, not really the history, the future of the channel, you know, what is it gonna, What's going to happen, you know, the world today with gas and everything else being the way it is. Now that I have kids, I worry about the, the future that they may be left with and all of those things. So, yeah, put in the comments like something that, you know, you would tell the worry rock. Since I came here and you came with me, technically, you know, you saw the worry rock and you could express your worries too. So let's get over to our main thing that we came here to do. So we made it. We are here at the Hart Family Cemetery. Burials here began in 1860. And if you can't, if the razor wire doesn't give it away, I mean, we are literally inside Atlanta airport. I mean, technically this lot has been made for the cemetery but all the way down and all the way back like all the way down here like you can see way down there that's where the gate is or it's not really a gate it's just the road to come down here and you drive down and this is where you park and there's your little thing explaining the cemetery and they make it clear no trespassing airport personnel only So I thought this was a very unique cemetery, just in the sense that it's kind of on the airport. And as we talk, there may be planes taking off, which I find kind of cool. So I'm going to read a little bit about the cemetery and we're going to go up and we're going to go look at it. And I know we're not in the best part of town. That's why I keep looking. Um, so if the camera just suddenly stops, that's because somebody was coming down here. Like, I don't know how many other people come to visit this cemetery, 
so it makes me nervous like if another car pulls down this road the video will abruptly stop and we'll I'll get back with you at a, a different safer location so yeah let's uh, let's read about the family and then we'll go up and look at it okay the property on which the cemetery is located when it was purchased by John J Hart and his first wife Nellie according to family documents drafted J.M. Hart, son of John J. and Nellie, the hilltop now contained in the cemetery was chosen by Nellie Hart as her preferred burial ground. She died in 1860 and was the first person buried in the cemetery. Subsequently, many of her descendants and relatives are buried here also. William J. Hart, the second person buried in the cemetery, was a Confederate soldier who deserted during the war. He was traveling to D.C. to be granted a pardon for desertion by the United States government when he was hit and killed by a train. Family history accounts indicate that the family was opposed to slavery and did not wholeheartedly support the rebellion by the southern states. Several of the sons of John J. Hart by his first wife Nellie and his second wife Elizabeth remained on or adjacent to the original property. In fact, over a century later, many of their descendants are still living in the area and several just recently moved as a result of the airport expansion. So it shows how many people are buried out here, but the cemetery is in such bad shape like, I don't know if that's a grave. Like, I truly don't know what is what out here. You can hear, look, there goes a plane there. You can hear planes coming and going. I mean, we are right up on the airport. And I thought that either she would be buried. Man, what a... It's a shame. Like obviously the airport's gonna do as least as possible. They're just leaving it as it is. But it is such a shame. Like there's a few readable stones out here, but a lot have been lost to time with weather and all of that stuff. And I don't really wanna get too far off in the weeds. Like that's Walter Hart. There's Matilda. Heart. That's an 1882. It's a 1909. And then you see this stone, and it's like, who does that represent? There's a Velma, 1889. And that's another. You can't really read that one either. And that's an infant that's over there. So let's, yeah, see, it's like I feel like I was on a grave there, but I don't, I don't know. Like, I don't think any of the other ones are readable. Like, you've got this one that has, they just etched that in. You can't read anything on that. Like, the born and the died. It looks like it's October of 18-something. The last thing I want to do is come out here and get a tick or a chigger or anything that is not fun. Let's see. That is Ida Phillips Sims. She's from the 60s, so that's actually readable. And that is Jesse Sims. He was he was in World War One. How cool, right? Private U.S. Army World War One. And like there, see that's got to be a marker. Like there's markers. Like I don't want to pick the stones up. Like I'm not, I'm not doing that. So yeah, Hart Cemetery. There's another cemetery just right on the other side of the road, but it's, fair. look at that. Look how cool that is. 
it's really fairly accessible. This one you actually have to come like kind of on airport property to look at. And I hate, I would imagine it's got to be one of these as some of the, I mean these, obviously we can't read the names on them anymore, but she would have picked the hilltop, obviously. All of this has been built up, you know, for the airport. This was probably the, the high spot back whenever. So yeah, pretty cool, pretty neat little place. Like a cemetery in an airport. Not only just any airport, like the world's busiest airport to go with it. Like there goes another one. Like you can tell it's it's that time of day. They are coming and going. I do like the fence. They've put in a new fence. At least at least that's been done. I don't know who did it, but at least somebody had enough, you know, courtesy to do that. And it's very ex accessible. Like that's another thing I can't believe is how accessible this is. Like you, I guess the cemetery, like. The, maybe the airport or whoever runs this wanted to make it accessible to whoever needs to come out here to do whatever they need to do, which is really cool. Accessibility counts. A lot of people forget about that kind of stuff. But yeah, it's a cool little cemetery. And so thanks again for watching. You really don't know how much I appreciate, you know, you guys watching and I thought today could just be one of those like, hey, let's take a trip. I'm just gonna air out some grievances. We made it to the Worry Rock and you got to hear all the things that I'm worried about. We got to come over here to the airport and see a, a pretty neat little cemetery just tucked in the corner here at the airport. 1860, so this was long before anybody ever thought of airplanes, right? So, on the names, like as I'm looking at this board that I took that picture of, it says Irene was the first, and it says how identified, and it says with headstone, but I didn't see said headstone, unless it's just been rubbed off, and maybe if you know the history of this, you can help, you know, point me to whichever one it was in the video, like time, time stamp it, or just leave the comment of where it was. Like I feel like I've already, I've already got some mosquito bites just from walking out there, probably around those those trees. But yeah, really cool cemetery. If you've made it this far, hey, leave those questions down in the comments. Leave your, um, your worry rock comments of what you're worried about in the world. Leave, just, just leave comments. I love the comments, the good ones, the bad ones. And I say bad by the sense of some people think that they can fix, you know, it's like, oh, I don't like the way you do, so I'm gonna tell you how you should do your channel. And those are fun to read too, because it's one of those situations where I see that and I think, oh, well, why don't you just start you a channel and do it that way? Because that's kind of what I did. I would watch said other YouTube channels and go, I think I could do that. Like, I'm pretty confident that I'm getting in the shade because it is hot today. Oh wow, that one's close. Look at that. That may not come across close on camera, but yeah, that one's close. So yeah, I just always thought like, hey, I could do that. And then finally last year I was like, that's it. I'm gonna do it. Like if some of these channels that I watch, if they can do it and be successful, then anybody can. And I'm proof positive that if I can do it, anybody can do it. So. If you're on the fence about trying to start a channel, do it. I gotta, I, I, anybody, I, I, anybody should do it. I think anybody can do it. You just gotta put the work in, kinda try to make some interesting different content that people wanna see, no matter what the subject is, just make it different, make it your way. Don't try to copy, do your own thing. Yeah, so that's, that's my little tangent, I'm sorry. I know this is, this is gonna be a very long video but I don't mind it because, hey, like we haven't had one of these kind of videos in a while where I just kind of walk around and I just talk and do the random things that I do. And we get to, we got to see a few cool things today. There was one other thing that I was trying to find, but I couldn't find. So the next time we come over here and do one of these, I'm gonna look for it. It was the, uh, 
the headstone. Somebody put a headstone over at Emory University about how they hate gravity. And I just thought that was comical. Like they, they said gravity is like the root of all evil to man. So they made this headstone for like in memory of gravity. Like they hated gravity so much they wanted gravity to die, which is kind of funny. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. It's been a long video. Just thanks for coming along for the ride. If you made it this far, thank you so much. And you know what? You never know what you're going to find on the back roads. I'll see you guys next time.